This video is about Lucifer, the light bringer. And who is Lucifer? First of all, let's start with some definitions. Lucifer is a name that uh, someone can take as their own name, just like we all have names and nicknames. So there can be more than one individual whose name or who is claiming the name Lucifer. Uh, addition to that, the name Satan is not actually a name. It is more of a title. It just simply means evil. And the title devil is also a title. It means evil, Satan, the same thing. So to say that someone is a devil is simply saying that they are evil or doing evil or doing the work of Satan doing evil work. Hence, devil. So, this video is about Lucifer. And there are certainly connections to Lucifer being a devil and Satan. So, Yahweh showed me everything in this video with the book of Esther, which is kind of interesting because I had never made that connection before. So let's read Esther chapter 1 together. Now it came to pass in the days of Ahasuerus, this is Ahasuerus, which reigned from India even unto Ethiopia, over an hundred and seven and twenty provinces, that in those days when the king Ahasuerus sat on the throne of his kingdom, which was in Shushan, the palace, in the third year of his reign, he made a feast unto all his princes and his servants, the power of Persia and Media, the nobles and princes of the provinces being before him. When he showed the riches of his glorious kingdom and the honor of his excellent majesty, many days, even an hundred and fourscore days. And when these days were expired, the king made a feast unto all the people that were present in Shushan, the palace, both unto great and small, seven days in the court of the garden of the king's palace, where were white, green, and blue hangings, fastened with cords of fine linen and purple to silver rings, and pillars of marble. The beds were of gold and silver upon a pavement of red and blue and white and black marble. And they gave them drink in vessels of gold, the vessels being diverse one from another, and royal wine in abundance according to the state of the king. And the drinking was according to the law, none did compel, for so the king had appointed to all officers of his house that they should do according to every man's pleasure. Also Vashti, the queen, made a feast for the women in the royal house which belonged to King Ahasuerus. On the seventh day, when the heart of the king was merry with wine, he commanded Mehuman, Biztha, Harbona, Figtha, and Abgatha, Zethar, and Carcas, the seven chamberlains that served in the presence of Ahasuerus, the king, to bring Vashti, the queen, before the king with the crown royal to show the people and the princes her beauty, for she was fair to look on. But the queen Vashti, refused to come at the king's commandment by his chamberlains. Therefore was the king very wroth, and his anger burned in him. Then the king said to the wise men, which knew the times, for so was the king's manner toward all that knew law and judgment. And the next unto him was Karshina, Shethar, Admatha, Tarshish, Meraz, Marsina, and Memekin, the seven princes of Persia and Media which saw the king's face, and which sat the first in the kingdom. What shall we do unto the queen Vashti, according to law, because she hath not performed the commandment of King Ahasuerus by the chamberlains? And Memucan answered before the king and the princes, Vashti the queen hath not done wrong to the king only, but also to all the princes and to all the people that are in all the provinces of the king Ahasuerus. For this deed of the queen shall come abroad unto all women, so that they shall despise their husbands in their eyes, when it shall be reported, 
the king Ahasuerus commanded Vashti the queen to be brought in before him, but she came not. Likewise shall the ladies of Persia and Media say this day unto all the king's princes, which have heard of the deed of the queen, thus shall there arise too much contempt and wrath. If it please the king, let there go a royal commandment from him, and let it be written among the laws of the Persians and the Medes, that it be not altered, that Vashti come no more before king Ahasuerus, and let the king give her royal estate unto another that is better than she. And when the king's degree, which he shall make, shall be published throughout all his empire, for it is great, all the wives shall give to their husbands honor, both to great and small. And the saying pleased the king and the princes, and the king did according to the word of Memucan. For he sent letters into all the king's provinces, into every province according to the writing thereof, and to every people after their language, that every man should bear rule in his own house, and that it should be published according to the language of every people. Queen Vashti rebelled against the king, refused to obey the king's command, and was punished with banishment from the presence of the king. Ahasuerus means prince, head, chief. Karshina, a lamb sleeping. Shethar, putrefied, searching. Admatha, a cloud of death, a mortal vapor. Tarshish, contemplation, examination. Meraz, defluxion, a flowing down, a collection of pus or putrelent matter in any part of an animal body, an abscess. Marcina, bitterness of a bramble. Memucan, impoverished, to prepare, certain, true. The seven princes of Persia and Media. Persia means that cuts or divides, a nail, a griffin, a horseman. Media means measure, habit, covering. The book of Esther is lore, or a parable, a story with a moral or a lesson, not a historically accurate book. It says so right there in the book of Esther. Esther, chapter 10, verse 2. And all the acts of his power and of his might and the declaration of the greatness of Mordecai were unto the king advanced him. Are they not written in the book of the chronicles of the kings of Media and Persia? The Bible is the only true history book. Persia, that cuts or divides a nail, a griffin, a horseman. Media, measure, habit, covering. False history records. All lore, mythology, and so-called history books that are written by men are false history, false religion. Everything written or told that is not the word of the Yahuwah is deception. There is no truth except the Yahuwah. Romans chapter 3 verse 4. God forbid, yea, let God be true, but every man a liar, as it is written, that thou mightest be justified in thy sayings, and mightest overcome when thou art judged. Numbers twenty three nineteen. God is not a man that he should lie, neither the son of man that he should repent. Hath he said, and shall he not do it? Or hath he spoken, and shall he not make it good? This does not mean that there are not valuable lessons to be learned from the book of Esther. The book was included in the Bible for a reason, many reasons, and there are many lessons to learn. But we're going to explore one particular reason. The story of Esther is lore, or a modified occulted version of the story of Yahweh and his chosen people. The rebellion of the angels, the sons of Elohim, and the rebellion of man, sparked by the temptation of Eve, resulting in the fall of mankind. Let us consider Esther chapter 1 verses 1 through 5. Now it came to pass in the days of Ahasuerus, this is Ahasuerus, which reigned from India even unto Ethiopia, 
over an hundred and seven and twenty provinces, that in those days when the king Ahasuerus sat on the throne of his kingdom, which was in Shushan the palace, in the third year of his reign, he made a feast unto all his princes and his servants, the power of Persia and Media, the nobles and princes of the provinces, being before him when he showed the riches of his glorious kingdom and the honor of his excellent majesty many days, even an hundred and fourscore days. And when these days were expired, the king made a feast unto all the people that were present in Shushan the palace, both unto great and small, seven days in the court of the garden of the king's palace. Ahasuerus means prince, chief, head. The prince, head, chief is the Aleph. Iaoa, who is the prince of peace, Iausha. India means snake charming. The snake or serpent is Satan, who tempted Eve in the Garden of Eden. Leviathan, the serpent, the dragon, Satan. Isaiah chapter 27, verse 1. In that day the Lord with his sore and great and strong sword shall punish Leviathan, the piercing serpent, even Leviathan, that crooked serpent, and he shall slay the dragon that is in the sea. Job 41, 1 through 34. Canst thou draw out Leviathan with an hook, or his tongue with a cord which thou lettest down? Canst thou put an hook into his nose, or bore his jaw through with a thorn? Will he make many supplications unto thee? Will he speak soft words unto thee? Will he make a covenant with thee? Wilt thou take him for a servant forever? Wilt thou play with him as with a bird, or wilt thou bind him for thy maidens? Shall the companions make a banquet of him? Shall they part him among the merchants? Canst thou fill his skin with barbed irons, or his head with fish spears? Lay thine hand upon him. Remember the battle. Do no more. Behold, the hope of him is in vain. Shall not one be cast down even at the sight of him? None is so fierce that dare stir him up. Who then is able to stand before me? Who hath prevented me that I should repay him? Whatsoever is under the whole heaven is mine. I will not conceal his parts, nor his power, nor his comely proportion. Who can discover the face of his garment? Or who can come to him with his double bridle? Who can open the doors of his face? His teeth are terrible round about. His scales are his pride, shut up together as with a close seal. One is so near to another that no air can come between them. They are joined one to another. They stick together that they cannot be sundered. By his kneesings a light doth shine, and his eyes are like the eyelids of the morning. Out of his mouth go burning lamps, and sparks of fire leap out. Out of his nostrils go a smoke, as out of a seething pot or cauldron. His breath kindleth coals, and a flame goeth out of his mouth. In his neck remaineth strength, and sorrow is turned into joy before him. The flakes of his flesh are joined together. They are firm in themselves. They cannot be moved. His heart is as firm as a stone, yea, as hard as a piece of the nether millstone. When he raiseth up himself, the mighty are afraid. By reason of breakings, they purify themselves. The sword of him that layeth at him cannot hold, the spear, the dart, nor the habergeon. He esteemeth iron as straw, and brass as rotten wood. The arrow cannot make him flee, sling stones are turned with him into stubble. Darts are counted as stubble, he laugheth at the shaking of a spear. Sharp stones are under him, he spreadeth sharp pointed things upon the mire. He maketh the deep to boil like a pot. He maketh the sea like a pot of ointment. He maketh the path to shine after him. One would think the deep to be hoary. Upon earth there is not his like who is made without fear. He beholdeth all things. He is a king over all the children of pride. The Leviathan's description sounds an awful lot like Lucifer, the, where was that, the light shining from his eyes. Mm. 
By his neesings a light doth shine, and his eyes are like the eyelids of morning, of the morning. Out of his mouth go burning lamps, and sparks of fire leap out. Hmm. Later in those verses, it does talk about how, correct, here we are, verse 25, when he raiseth up himself, the mighty are afraid. By reason of breakings, they purify themselves. So Yahweh uses Lucifer, also known as Leviathan, Satan, the devil. When he raises up himself, the mighty are afraid. By reason of breaking, they purify themselves. So Yahweh uses these evildoers to break us, to bring us to our knees so that we will seek Yahweh. If you read in the book of Job, it talks a whole lot about um, salvation only coming from Yahweh and righteousness only being of Yahweh. That our self-righteousness is vanity, is pride. And Yahweh breaks the pride in us and purifies us with Leviathan. The very last verse that I had read, verse 34, he beholdeth all things, he is a king over all the children of pride. Psalm chapter 18, verse 8, there went up a smoke out of his nostrils and fire out of his mouth, devoured, coals were kindled by it. Remember the verses talking about heaping coals on the enemy's head? That if you, someone wrongs you, you forgive them, and it he and you bless them, you wish well for them, which I do. It heaps coals on their head. They will have coals heaped on their head by Leviathan, which will break them and bring them to the salvation of Yahweh. At first, I felt bad. I thought I don't want coals to be heaped on anyone's head because of me or anything they said to me. So I try to avoid confrontations so that people won't sin against Yahweh by saying hateful things to me. But that is actually between the individual and Yahweh. And, and it's also to test me, to make sure that I'm still forgiving people and blessing people, even though they were really displaying mean and evil and nasty things to me, which happened recently. And I thank Yahweh for every trial and test that he gives me because they all test me and refine me. Psalm chapter 74, verses 13 through 14. Thou didst divide the sea by thy strength. Thou breakest the heads of the dragons in the waters. Thou breakest the heads of Leviathan in pieces and gavest him to be meat to the people inhabiting the wilderness. That uh, Leviathan, evilness, will be broken and they will be meat to the people inhabiting the wilderness. Ooh, we are eating the poisonous words, the hateful words of Leviathan, of Satan. Revelation 20, verse two. And he laid hold on the dragon, that old serpent, which is the devil and Satan, and bound him a thousand years. Zechariah chapter five. Then I turned and lifted up mine eyes and looked, and behold, a flying roll. And he said unto me, What seest thou? And I answered, I see a flying roll. The length thereof is twenty cubits, and the breadth thereof twenty cubits. Then said he unto me, This is the curse that goeth forth over the face of the whole earth. For every one that stealeth shall be cut off, as on this side according to it. And every one that sweareth shall be cut off, as on that side, according to it. I will bring it forth, saith the Lord of hosts, and it shall enter into the house of the thief, and into the house of him that sweareth falsely by my name. And it shall remain in the midst of his house, and shall consume it with the timber thereof and the stones thereof. 
Then the angel that talked with me went forth and said unto me, Lift up now thine eyes, and see what is this that goeth forth. And I said, What is it? And he said, This is an ephah that goeth forth. He said, Moreover, this is their resemblance through all the earth. And behold, there was lifted up a talent of lead, and this is a woman that sitteth in the midst of the ephah. And he said, This is wickedness, and he cast it into the midst of the ephah, and he cast the weight of lead upon the mouth thereof. Then I lifted up mine eyes, and looked, and behold, there came out two women, and the wind was in their wings, for they had wings like the wings of a stork, and they lifted up the ephah between the earth and the heaven. Then said I to the angel that talked with me, Whither do these bear the ephah? And he said unto me, To build it an house in the land of Shinar, and it shall be established and set there upon her own base. Her own base. Shinar means to cast out a breach, that what is young, or shakes, growls, tooth town, city of wit. Now how do we understand these verses in the book of Esther? Now it came to pass in the days of Ahasuerus, this is Ahasuerus, which reigned from India even unto Ethiopia over an hundred and seven and twenty provinces. India means snake charmer. Ethiopia means fiery eye, keen of vision, appearing as fire. Ahasuerus reigned from the cast out, the sleeping, those charmed by the snake to the king of vision, the awakened. The Yahweh rules over all, and all serve the Yahweh, both the evildoer and the righteous. There's a whole lot more to be learned from the book of Esther, but Yahweh used the book of Esther to show me who Lucifer is. Therefore, this video will focus on the revelation of Lucifer and the connection to the book of Esther and Queen Vashti, the rebellious woman who disobeys the king. Revelation chapter 12. And there appeared a great wonder in heaven, a woman clothed with the sun and the moon under her feet, and upon her head a crown of twelve stars. And she, being with child, cried, travailing in birth and pained to be delivered. And there appeared another wonder in heaven, and behold, a great red dragon, having seven heads and ten horns and seven crowns upon its heads. And his tail drew the third part of the stars of heaven and did cast them to the earth. And the dragon stood before the woman, which was ready to be delivered, for to devour her child as soon as it was born. And she brought forth a man-child who was to rule all nations with a rod of iron and her child was caught up unto God and to his throne. And the woman fled into the wilderness, where she hath a place prepared of God, that they should feed her there a thousand two hundred and threescore days. And there was war in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon, and the dragon fought and his angels, and prevailed not, neither was their place found any more in heaven. And the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil and Satan, which deceiveth the whole world. He was cast out into the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. And I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, Now has come salvation and strength, and the kingdom of our God, and the power of his Christ. For the accuser of our brethren is cast down, which accuses them before our God day and night. And they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb, and by the word of their testimony, and they loved not their lives unto the death, Therefore rejoice, ye heavens, and ye that dwell in them. Woe to the inhabitants of the earth and of the sea, for the devil is come down unto you, having great wrath, because he knoweth that he hath but a short time. And when the dragon saw that he was cast un unto the earth, he persecuted the woman which brought forth the man-child. And to the woman were given two wings of a great eagle, that she might fly into the wilderness, into her place where she is nourished for a time and times and half a time from the face of the serpent. And the serpent cast out of his mouth water as a flood after the woman, that he might cause her to be carried away of the flood. 
And the earth helped the woman, and the earth opened her mouth and swallowed up the flood which the dragon cast out of his mouth. And the dragon was wroth with the woman, and he went to make war with the remnant of her seed, which keep the commandments of God and have the testimony of Jesus Christ. This is the prophecy fulfilled with the birth of a Yahusha, of a woman, the Virgin Mary. And Lucifer has usurped the position of savior from Yahusha in the imagery of Columbia, Leviathan, the serpent, the dragon, the devil, Satan, is a woman, the queen of heaven, Columbia, Diana, the first beast, the Antichrist spirit. Satan flipping good for evil and evil for good. Satan portraying herself as a Yahweh, the father and creator of all things, as both the father and the mother of all creation. Adam was created in the image of a Yahweh, and the woman Eve was taken from Adam, and a new creation was created from man, Adam. Darkness and light. Genesis chapter 1, verses 1 through 5. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth, and the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep, and the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. And God said, Let there be light, and there was light. And God saw the light, that it was good, and God divided the light from the darkness. And God called the light day, and the darkness he called night, and the evening and the morning were the first day. What Iyahua took from Adam was the darkness. Eve is darkness. Adam is light. I'm not saying that women are evil and men are good. Not so. Man comes from woman, is born of woman, is born into sin. And all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. Eve was deceived by Satan, evil. Eve, darkness, evening was innocent. Evil Satan tempted Eve with knowledge and the seed of Eve became contaminated with evil. Satan planted the seed of knowledge, the desire to be the light, into the darkness, innocence, ignorance, incomprehension of the light. Knowledge. Satan Lucifer offered knowledge, enlightenment. Lucifer is the bringer of the light, enlightenment, knowledge, or at least that's what he wants us to think. Darkness was not evil in the beginning. Darkness became evil because of the darkness's desire to become light. The darkness was jealous of the light and the darkness innocence rebelled, left innocence behind, and pursued light and knowledge. The serpent offered Eve a way to comprehend the light, to become the light, Iyaowa, Adam, man. John chapter 1. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by him, and without him was not anything made that was made. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. And the light shineth in darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. Genesis chapter 3 verses 4 through 5. And the serpent said unto the woman, Ye shall not surely die, for God doth know that in the day ye eat thereof, then your eyes shall be opened, and ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. Genesis 3, 16. Unto the woman he said, I will greatly multiply thy sorrow and thy conception. In sorrow thou shalt bring forth children, and thy desire shall be to thy husband, 
and he shall rule over thee. The light rules over the darkness, and the darkness desires to be the light. And that brings us back to Lucifer. The name Lucifer means light bringer, morning star, dawn. Revelation chapter 12, verse 7. And there was war in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon, and the dragon fought and his angels, and prevailed not, neither was their place found any more in heaven. And the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil and Satan, which deceiveth the whole world. He was cast out into the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. How do you understand these verses? Is Michael the hero who defeated Satan and his angels? Yahweh Yahusha is the lamb, the sacrificial lamb who bought our salvation with his blood. Not a man, not an angel, Yahweh. Only Yahweh saves. Yahweh purchased our freedom from the second death with his own blood. Not with the blood of a man or an angel. Yahusha's blood, the blood of the truth, the light, the life. Ephesians chapter 2 verses 8 and 9. For by grace are ye saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. Titus chapter 3 verse 5. Not by works of righteousness, which we have done, but according to his mercy, he saved us by the washing of regeneration and renewing of the Holy Ghost. Romans 10, 9, that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shall believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. Acts 4, 12, neither is there salvation in any other for there is none other name under heaven given among men, whereby we must be saved. John 14, 6. Jesus saith unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. John 6, 44. No man can come to me except the Father which hath sent me draw him, and I will raise him up at the last day. Acts 16, 30 through 33. And brought them out and said, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? And they said, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved and thy house. And they spake unto him the word of the Lord, and to all that were in his house. And he took them the same hour of the night and washed their stripes and was baptized, he and all his straightway. Psalm 37, 39. But the salvation of the righteous is of the Lord. He is their strength in the time of trouble. John 15, 1 through 27. I am the true vine, and my father is the husbandman. Every branch in me that beareth not fruit, he taketh away. And every branch that beareth fruit, he purgeth it, that it may bring forth more fruit. Now ye are clean through the word which I have spoken unto you. Abide in me, and I in you, as the branch cannot bear fruit of itself, except it abide in the vine. No more can ye, except ye abide in me. I am the vine, ye are the branches. He that abideth in me, and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit. For without me ye can do nothing. If a man abide not in me, he is cast forth as a branch and is withered, and men gather them and cast them into the fire, and they are burned. If ye abide in me, and my words abide in you, ye shall ask what ye will, and it shall be done unto you. Herein is my Father glorified, that ye bear much fruit, so shall ye be my disciples. As the Father hath loved me, so have I loved you. Continue ye in my love. If ye keep my commandments, Ye shall abide in my love, 
even as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. These things have I spoken unto you, that my joy might remain in you, and that your joy might be full. This is my commandment, that ye love one another as I have loved you. Greater love hath no man than this, that a man lay down his life for his friends. Ye are my friends, if ye do whatsoever I command you. Henceforth I call you not servants, for the servant knoweth not what his Lord doeth. But I have called you friends, for all things that I have heard of my Father I have made known unto you. Ye have not chosen me, but I have chosen you, and ordained you, that ye should go and bring forth fruit, and that your fruit should remain, that whatsoever ye shall ask of the Father in my name, he may give it you. These things I command you, that ye love one another. If the world hate you, ye know that it hated me before it hated you. If ye were of the world, the world would love his own. But because ye are not of the world, but I have chosen you out of the world, therefore the world hateth you. Remember the word that I said unto you, the servant is not greater than his Lord. If they have persecuted me, they will also persecute you. If they have kept my saying, they will keep yours also. But all these things will they do unto you for my name's sake, because they know not him that sent me. If I had not come and spoken unto them, they had not had sin. But now they have no cloak for their sin. He that hateth me hateth my father also. If I had not done among them the works which none other man did, they had not had sin. But now have they both seen and hated, both me and my father. But this cometh to pass, that the word might be fulfilled that is written in their law. They hated me without a cause. But when the Comforter is come, whom I will send unto you from the Father, even the Spirit of truth, which proceedeth from the Father, he shall testify of me, and ye also shall bear witness because ye have been with me from the beginning. Psalm 3, 8 Salvation belongeth unto the Lord. Thy blessing is upon thy people. Selah Psalm 62, 1 Truly my soul waiteth upon God. From him cometh my salvation. Acts 28, 28 Be it known therefore unto you that the salvation of God is sent unto the Gentiles, and they that will hear it. Acts 2.38 Then Peter said unto them, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the remission of sins, and ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Mark 16.16 16. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved, but he that believeth not shall be damned. Jonah 2.9 but I will sacrifice unto thee with the voice of thanksgiving. I will pay that that I have vowed. Salvation is of the Lord. Romans 10, 9 through 10. That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Romans 6.14 For sin shall not have dominion over you, for ye are not under the law, but under grace. John 3.16-18 through 18. For God so loved the world, that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God sent not his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. He that believeth on him is not condemned, but he that believeth not is condemned already, because he hath not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. John chapter 3 verses 19 through 21. And this is the condemnation, that light is come into the world, and men love darkness rather than light, because their deeds were evil. For every one that doeth evil hateth the light, neither cometh to the light, lest his deeds should be reproved. But he that doeth truth 
cometh to the light, that his deeds may be made manifest, that they are wrought in God. Salvation comes only through faith in Yahweh, Yahusha HaMashiach. Therefore, it is not Michael who defeats Satan and his angels. Let's read it again. Revelation chapter 12, verse 7. And there was war in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon, and the dragon fought and his angels. The word against is used here. And we are told that this verse means that Michael fought against the devil and his angels and prevailed over him. That Michael defeated Satan in heaven. Consider this. Against can mean in opposition to, or it can mean together. My left hand and my right hand are in opposition to one another. They are against one another. And now my right hand and my left hand are against one another. I press them together. They are against each other. They are joined together. Michael fought on the side of the dragon, with the dragon and his angels. Revelations 12, eight through nine. And prevailed not, neither was their place found any more in heaven. And the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil and Satan, which deceiveth the whole world. He was cast out into the earth and his angels were cast out with him. Every scripture has a witness. The word of the Yahweh is testified of at least twice. So where is the testimony of this scripture? Genesis 32, verses 24 through 31. And Jacob was left alone, and there wrestled a man with him until the breaking of the day. And when he saw that he prevailed not against him, he touched the hollow of his thigh. And the hollow of Jacob's thigh was out of joint as he wrestled with him. And he said, Let me go, for the day breaketh. And he said, I will not let thee go, except thou bless me. And he said unto him, What is thy name? And he said, Jacob. And he said, Thy name shall be called no more Jacob, but Israel. For as a prince hast thou power with God and with men, and hast prevailed. And Jacob asked him, and said, Tell me, I pray thee, thy name. And he said, Wherefore is it that thou dost ask after my name? And he blessed him there. And Jacob called the name of the place Penuel, for I have seen God face to face, and my life is preserved. And as he passed over Penuel, the sun rose upon him, and he halted upon his thigh. Penuel means he who strives with God, not in opposition to but with, together. Jacob, Israel, defeated Satan, the dragon, the devil, and because Jacob strove against Satan, Satan touched the hollow of Jacob's thigh, kicked him in the gonads, bruised the seed of Jacob, the statues without penises, symbolism that Jacob did not triumph over Satan, but that Satan has cut off the seed of Jacob, Israel, lies. Jacob has prevailed over death. Yahusha, born of woman, the seed of David, the seed of Jacob, defeated death for all time. Also why the statues have small penises. The sinew shrank where the angel had kicked Jacob. More mockery. Revelation chapter 12, verses 10 through 11. 
And I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, Now has come salvation and strength and the kingdom of our God and the power of his Christ. For the accuser of our brethren is cast down, which accused them before our God day and night. And they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony. And they loved not their lives unto the death. So that verse kind of sums all of it up of what we were just talking about. Uh, salvation has come and the strength in the kingdom of our God and the power of his Christ. Our God is the Yahuwah and the power of his Christ, his anointed, the, our, the power in us, which is the Holy Spirit within us. For the accuser of our brethren is cast down. Satan and his angels are the accusers, including Lucifer. Who accuses us before Yahweh day and night? Zechariah chapter 3 verses 1 through 10. And he showed me Joshua the high priest standing before the angel of the Lord, and Satan standing at his right hand to resist him. And the Lord said unto Satan, The Lord rebuke thee, O Satan, even the Lord that hath chosen Jerusalem rebuke thee. Is not this a brand plucked out of the fire? Now Joshua was clothed with filthy garments and stood before the angel. And he answered and spake unto those that stood before him, saying, Take away the filthy garments from him. And unto him he said, Behold, I have caused thine iniquity to pass from thee, and I will clothe thee with change of raiment. And I said, Let them set a fair mitre upon his head. So they set a fair mitre upon his head and clothed him with garments. And the angel of the Lord stood by. And the angel of the Lord protested unto Joshua, saying, Thus saith the Lord of hosts, If thou wilt walk in my ways, and if thou wilt keep my charge, then thou shalt also judge my house, and shalt also keep my courts, and I will give thee places to walk among these that stand by. Hear now, O Joshua, the high priest, thou and thy fellows that sit before thee, for they are men wondered at, for behold, I will bring forth my servant, the branch. For behold, the stone that I have laid before Joshua, upon one stone shall be seven eyes. Behold, I will engrave the engraving thereof, saith the Lord of hosts, and I will remove the iniquity of that land in one day. In that day, saith the Lord of hosts, shall ye call every man his neighbor under the vine and under the fig tree. Revelation 12, verses 12 through 17. Therefore rejoice, ye heavens, and ye that dwell in them. Woe to the inhabitants of the earth and of the sea. For the devil is come down unto you, having great wrath, because he knoweth that he hath but a short time. And when the dragon saw that he was cast unto the earth, he persecuted the woman which brought forth the man-child. And to the woman were given two wings of a great eagle, that she might fly into the wilderness, into her place, where she is nourished for a time, and times, and half a time, from the face of the serpent. And the serpent cast out of his mouth water as a flood after the woman, that he might cause her to be carried away of the flood. And the earth helped the woman, and the earth opened her mouth, and swallowed up the flood which the dragon cast out of his mouth. And the dragon was wroth with the woman, and he went to make war with the remnant of her seed, which keep the commandments of God and have the testimony of Jesus Christ. Who accuses mankind of wrongdoing? Who condemns us? Who is the dragon? Who mocks Yahweh? Who mocks Yahweh's chosen, the anointed? Lucifer, the false light bringer. Revelation 12:16. I, Jesus, have sent mine angel to testify unto you these things in the churches. I am the root and the offspring of David and the bright and morning star. Yahusha is the bright and morning star, the light bringer, not Lucifer. Yahusha is the body of the anointed, the believers, our mortal body with the Holy Spirit of the Yahweh residing within us, is the root and the offspring of David and the bright and morning star. The root 
is Yahweh's Holy Spirit, the foundation upon which we are built, founded our foundation of the beginning with Yahweh in the Garden of Eden. Our mortal bodies, the offspring, the begotten of David, the beloved, we are the light of the earth, the bright and morning star with Yahweh. Matthew 5 verses 14 through 16. Ye are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hid. Neither do men light a candle and put it under a bush, but on a candlestick, and it giveth light unto all that are in the house. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. So who is the imposter who accuses us and claims the name Lucifer? Michael, the archangel, the archangel, arch villain, who was cast down. So where do we see him in history? All around us, Michelangelo. The name means Michael the angel. Michelangelo is credited with being the chief architect who added the majority of the artwork to the Vatican, which, by the way, is the second temple built by Nehemiah, Ezra, and the Israelites who had returned from captivity. The second temple was never destroyed. It was desecrated, defiled, polluted, just like the first temple that was built by Solomon. Jude chapter 1 verse 9. Yet Michael the archangel, when contending with the devil, he disputed about the body of Moses, durst not bring against him a railing accusation, but said, The Lord rebuke thee. Michael was contending with the devil on the devil's side. Daniel chapter 12 verse 1. And at that time shall Michael stand up, the great prince which standeth for the children of thy people. And there shall be a time of trouble such as never was since there was a nation, even to that same time. And at that time thy people shall be delivered, every one that shall be found written in the book. Michael stands against us, testifies either for or against us, if we prevail in the struggle as Jacob did, or if we fall away. Daniel 10, 13. But the prince of the kingdom of Persia withstood me one and twenty days. But lo, Michael, one of the chief princes, came to help me, and I remained there with the kings of Persia. All obey Yahweh. The Yahweh put down the rebellion of the angels with the flood of Noah's day. Leviathan is controlled by Yahweh. Yahweh sends his angel of wrath, Michael, where and when he chooses. Daniel 10, 21. But I will show thee, which is noted in the scripture of truth, and there is none that holdeth with me in these things but Michael, your prince. Prince, accuser. Jeremiah 38, 4. Therefore the princes said unto the king, we beseech thee, let this man be put to death, for thus he weakeneth the hands of the men of war that remain in this city, and the hands of all the people, in speaking such words unto them. For this man seeketh not the welfare of this people, but the hurt. Who is Michael? Revelation 17. And there came one of the seven angels, which had the seven vials, and talked with me, saying unto me, Come hither, I will show unto thee the judgment of the great whore that sitteth upon many waters, with whom the kings of the earth have committed fornication, and the inhabitants of the earth have been made drunk with the wine of her fornication. So he carried me away in the spirit into the wilderness, and I saw a woman sit upon a scarlet-colored beast, full of names of blasphemy, having seven heads and ten horns. And the woman was arrayed in purple and scarlet color, and decked with gold and precious stones and pearls, 
having a golden cup in her hand full of abominations and filthiness of her fornication. And upon her forehead was a name written, Mystery, Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots and abominations of the earth. And I saw the woman drunken with the blood of the saints and with the blood of the martyrs of Jesus. And when I saw her, I wondered with great admiration. And the angel said unto me, Wherefore didst thou marvel? I will tell thee the mystery of the woman and of the beast that carrieth her, which hath the seven heads and the ten horns. The beast that thou sawest was and is not, and shall ascend out of the bottomless pit and go into perdition. And they that dwell on the earth shall wonder whose names were not written in the book of life from the foundation of the world, when they behold the beast that was and is not and yet is. And here is the mind which hath wisdom. The seven heads are seven mountains on which the woman sitteth. And there are seven kings, five are fallen, and one is, and the other is not yet come. And when he cometh, he must continue a short space. And the beast that was and is not, even he is the eighth and is of the seven that goeth into perdition. And the ten horns which thou sawest are ten kings which have received no kingdom as yet, but receive power as kings one hour with the beast. These have one mind and shall give their power and strength unto the beast. These shall make war with the lamb and the lamb shall overcome them. For he is Lord of lords and king of kings and they that are with him are called and chosen and faithful. And he saith unto me, The waters which thou sawest, where the whore sitteth, are peoples and multitudes and nations and tongues. The ten horns which thou sawest upon the beast, these shall hate the whore, and shall make her desolate and naked, and shall eat her flesh and burn her with fire. For God hath put in their hearts to fulfill his will and to agree, and give their kingdom unto the beast, until the words of God shall be fulfilled. And the woman which thou sawest is that great city, which reigneth over the kings of the earth. Michael is not the savior of mankind. Yahweh Yahusha is. Michael, whose name means, who is like God, is Satan, the devil, the dragon, the false Christ, the antichrist the false Lucifer. Notice the artwork attributed to Michelangelo. Mockery. Michael the Archangel portrayed as the savior in the place of Yahua Yahusha. Here's an article that I found very interesting. Two popes consecrate the Vatican to Saint Michael the Archangel July 5th, 2013, by Kathy Schiffer. Since his retirement, Pope Emeritus Benedict XVI has kept a low profile, living a life of quiet prayer and study in the home prepared for him in the Vatican gardens. So it was a treat for Vatican City state workers when Benedict joined his successor, Pope Francis, in the gardens on, July, on Friday, July 5th, for the blessing of a statue of St. Michael the Archangel. At the same time, Pope Francis consecrated the Vatican to the Archangel's protection. Pope Francis, in his remarks following the brief ceremony, noted that St. Michael defends the people of God from its enemy par excellence, the devil. Even if the devil attempts to disfigure the face of the Archangel, the Pope said, and thus the face of humanity. St. Michael wins because God acts in him and is stronger. Pope Francis, we've gathered here today in the Vatican Gardens to unveil a sculpture of St. Michael Archangel, the Patreon of Vatican City. It is something that had been planned a long time ago and that was approved by Pope Benedict XVI, whom we address with our, all our affection and thanksgiving. We also want to express to him our great joy in having him here today among us. Thank you so much. The statue was made of bronze and is about 16 feet high. The statue shows 
Michael defeating Satan on top of a globe, flipping good for evil and evil for good using the globe lie. Presenting Michael as the Savior, Michael as Yahusha, Yeshua, Joshua, Jesus, Jesus. Michael is Lucifer, darkness posing as light, a female angel, or perhaps I should say a feminine angel. Masculine is the light and feminine is the dark. The light and the dark work together. The light gives work and the dark gives rest. Woman was created to be a helpmate for man, to help with the work during the daylight and stay warm during the rest, darkness. Company, a companion who is an extra pair of hands and someone with whom to talk about things and solve problems. There is wisdom of the light and wisdom of the darkness. To know when to work and to know when to rest. One is not better than the other. Man and woman were created to live together as one. I hope this makes sense. I'm not saying that women are evil and men are good. All have sinned and fall short of the glory of Yahweh. Both are mankind. Two sides of the same coin, heads and tails. The male or man is the head and the female or woman is the tail. The tail follows where the head leads, but the tail keeps the flies off, shows joy, sorrow, tension, excitement, and keeps the body warm. The tail gives balance to the head. Well, that's about it for this video. Covered a whole lot of things and there's a whole lot of new revelations here. I hope that it all made sense. Seek Yahweh with your whole heart. Shalom.